Yo, what is good guys? Today, I'm back here with another fire video. Today, I'm going to be giving reasons of why Anthony Davis should win MVP and Defensive Player of the Year, but I'll be getting more into MVP rather than Defensive Player of the Year, but I might mention that a little bit too as well. So you know what? Let's get started. Anthony Davis has valid cases to win both the MVP this year and the Defensive Player of the Year this year. He's having a career season and has stayed mostly healthy for the first time in a while. Today, I'm explaining why you should get both and would be the first to do so since 1994 when Akeem Olajuwon won both. There are many reasons for both, and we're going to explain all reasons and say why other players shouldn't get it and debunk some arguments against him. So let's start us off with the main case, MVP. There are a lot of reasons Anthony Davis should win the MVP award. Many reasons such as scoring, defense, and team success are a few. I'm going to get into detail of one of these categories. My first category is scoring. Anthony Davis is averaging a career-high 28.3 points a game, which is the highest in the NBA only behind James Harden. He's doing this off of a career-high 53% field goal percentage and a surprisingly career-high 34% from three-point range. Granted, he only shoots 2.23 pointers a game. His free throw percentage is also yet yeah, another career high, 83%. As you can tell, Anthony Davis is having a career scoring year just to add to his great defense. Other offensive categories is my next point. Anthony Davis is having yet yeah, another career high with 2.3 assists a game, which is pretty good for a center slash power forward. Anthony Davis is also averaging 2.5 offensive rebounds a game, which is the 14th highest in the NBA which offensive rebounds are extremely important for putbacks and second chance points. Anthony Davis is also averaging a mere 2.2 turnovers a game, which is 44th in the NBA, which is great for a guy who has the ball a lot. Efficiency is my next point I'm going to make. Efficiency is a very underrated because it shows how efficient players are scoring the ball. One of the biggest mistakes people make is comparing bench players by using efficiency because they barely score the ball. It is also important because it determines whether a star player is a good scorer or not. Anthony Davis has a staggering 33.3 .3 efficiency, which is first in the NBA, which means he's the most efficient scorer in the entire NBA, which is a key point in his MVP case. Rebounding is my next point. Anthony Davis is averaging 11.1 .1 rebounds a game, which is fifth in the NBA. Rebounding is an extremely underrated stat because it gives this team possession of the ball, which leads to scoring. 8.6 of those are defensive and 2.5 are offensive. Anthony Davis is a great rebounder and it shows on paper. Defense is my next point. Even though I'm discussing his defensive player of the year case, I'm still going to give a brief look at Anthony Davis' defense because defense is a major case for MVP. Anthony Davis is averaging 2.5 blocks a game, which is first by a mile in the NBA. Anthony Davis is also averaging 1.5 steals a game, which is tied 15th in the NBA. There are a very brief description, but, you know, I had to get to the point. Team success is a killer for Anthony Davis, and the only weakness in the regular season, I mean. Playoffs, you know, been pretty good. He some made the second round of the playoffs, but let's just get to regular season team success. Even though Pelicans ended up finishing sixth seed in the very competitive Western Conference, there is a good argument for Davis' position. The first of all, the Pelicans lost DeMarcus Cousins to a tragic Achilles injury. Second of all, Davis has led the Pelicans to a very good record since All-Star break. They have went 6-4 in their last 10 home games and 7-3 and in their last 10 road games. Even though they're only a sixth seed, the Western Conference is very tight and they could slip into a fourth seed to increase this MVP case. Also last year, Russell Westbrook got the MVP, a lower seed, beat out James Tarrin, higher seed in the MVP race, so why can't it happen this year? Why not? I'm just saying after Cousins went down, Davis has led his team to many wins and has put up many 40-point games, including five 40-point games in February and March. The point is where I'm pointing out some flaws in other MVP candidate games. James Harden, we're going to mention some of his flaws. He's a very tough candidate to beat out. He's also not a very defensive mind person like Anthony Davis. Don't get me wrong, I'm not one of those people making fun of his bad defense because he has definitely improved this his defense this year. But it's just not as good as Davis's lockdown paint defense. Also, James Harden is nowhere near Davis in rebound, only averaging 5.4 rebounds a game. James Harden's team success is also undeniably great, but I'm here to say that his team is really, really good, unlike Davis's team. The Rockets have another star in Chris Paul, as well as one of the best benches in the NBA. 
And an another candidate is the King LeBron James, who I would say is my second pick, but we're going to say why Davis beats him. LeBron James is another very tough player to be in the MVP racing. LeBron's team success is around Davis's team, but the Cavaliers are in a weaker conference. Even though LeBron beats out Davis in assists, Davis beats out LeBron in rebounding and scoring. LeBron is a great defender, but I think Davis is better. And yet another candidate is Russell Westbrook. I'm just going to say it. He's a stat patter. Russell needs to learn what helps his team the most and not what's, what helps him the most to look good. Even though MVP voters are suckers for stat patters, the Thunder are having a very disappointing season with how much star power they have. Davis also beats Russell in scoring, rebounding, and overall defense by a lot. Debunking arguments is my next case. People may say his efficiency rating is only good because he takes paint shots. That may be true, but that doesn't take away from the fact he shoots around 20 shots a game and makes over more than half of them. People say his team record is too bad for him to win MVP, even though there are enough games for them. Well, we thought that maybe maybe to move up two seeds, but it was only by one game, one or two games. And they're in the second round of the playoffs now, compete with the Warriors, and they're currently losing 2-1. to one. But hey, I think it's going to be a great series, and we'll see what happens from here. James Harden is a surefire MVP, according to a lot of people. But Davis beats him in rebound and crushes him in defense. So in conclusion, Davis is a great scorer with incredible defensive abilities. He also has a great rebounding game with the OK team record. So that concludes today's video for the MVP case. But we're going to be talking about his Defensive Player of the Year case right now. I've already told you a little about Davis' defense, which I'll go over again, but more in detail. I think Davis could easily win this award. I will do the same thing I did for the, his MVP case. Again, Davis averages 2.5 blocks a game, the most in the NBA, and 1.4 steals a game. We already covered this, but I'll get into more detail. Blocks are important because they deny the chance of the other team scoring. Steals are important because you give the team the ball and maybe easy points. Davis has a defensive rating of 104.3, which is top 20 in the NBA. He also has a defensive win share of 0 0.047, which is really good for him because of the lack of defense on his team, excluding Davis. This stat may be deceiving because it credits people who haven't played a lot of games a lot more than it credits people who do. And Davis is among the top 10 of players around his games played. Anthony Davis's stick percentage is 24.6, which is really good for people his position. His block percentage is 52%, which means he blocks a lot of shots. Anthony Davis, I think, deserves the Defensive Player of the Year award by a mile. People like Draymond Green have switched to more of an offensive mindset. Kawhi Leonard, another annual candidate for this award, has been unfortunately injured the majority of the year. Anthony Davis def definitely has the defense and offensive presence his team needs to win. And in summary for his Defensive Player of the Year case, Anthony Davis is great at defense and deserves the MVP award. He's great at blocking shots and great at stealing the ball. He helps his team gain possession of the ball like no other. He definitely makes up for his lack of defense on the Pelicans. So in conclusion, Anthony Davis is a great young player and has a bright future in the NBA. I think he can already win the MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. If he doesn't, he'll definitely win one the, each in the future. I hope you enjoy my video today and agree with me. And as always, I'll see you next time.